Hello everyone and welcome back to our Bible study. We're talking about Deuteronomy 33 today and me for the second time because once again I forgot to turn my mic on as I filmed this video the first time. So, second run. <laughs> Here we go. I, I really need to stop doing that. <laughs> Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 33. This PDF that you're seeing up on the screen is available for your free download on our website. There's a link down in the description. When did the events of Deuteronomy chapter 33 happen? Thank you for asking. Approximately 1450 BC is when the words that are recorded in Deuteronomy 33 were spoken. Now, who were they spoken by? They were spoken by our favorite character in our studies, Moses. He's been around for a while, and, and this is the end of Moses' life coming up here. So appreciate him in these last two chapters of Deuteronomy and all that he's done. Moses is our first main character. He was speaking these words that were being recorded in this chapter. He was speaking them to the Israelites who were about to enter into the promised land that God had promised to give them as a home. I've also got Joshua under our main characters. He isn't really featured so much in this chapter, but he's about to take over the reins, take over leadership from Moses and to lead the people after Moses' death. So he's important to keep in mind. Now, where were these words spoken? As I mentioned, the Israelites were about to go into the promised land, but they hadn't done that yet. They were located in the land of Moab, and Moses was speaking to them in Moab before they got to cross the Jordan River and conquer the Canaan land. Now, move on over to page two. There are 29 verses in chapter 33, but you'll notice that our outline is pretty short, and I'll explain why in a little bit. But I have it all under one section, one through 29. Moses blesses the tribes of Israel before his death. So in Deuteronomy chapter 32, God told Moses that the day of his death had arrived. And so before his death, Moses wanted to speak to the Israelites and to speak a blessing over the people. He began by speaking about the, the glorious God who had brought Israel through the wilderness, who had descended from heaven on Mount Sinai and given his law to the people, which was something special, something they needed to appreciate. And then Moses began blessing each of the individual tribes in unique ways. This is the bulk of the chapter, verses 6 through 25. And I've summarized it just by saying that each tribe received a unique blessing. And the reason for that is there's a lot of figurative language, there's a lot of metaphor in the blessings that Moses gives. And so it takes a good bit of time to study and understand all of that. And I'm not sure that there's anything that I can can say in a five minute study that's really that valuable. So I definitely encourage you to go back and read verses six through 25 and to work through that. It's gonna take you more than five minutes to do it, right? But if you really want an appreciation for it, uh, go check out the text for yourself. Hopefully you've already read through the chapter though. So after Moses gives each tribe an individual blessing, he concluded his blessing with a praise to God and by reminding the Israelites just how lucky they were to be in this special covenant with, with the Lord, with the God of heaven. Moses said that God was willing to ride through the heavens, through the clouds in his majesty to come to Israel's aid. That's the kind of relationship that they had with him. And then Moses concludes this chapter in his blessing by saying, Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord, the shield of your help, and the sword of your triumph. And so that is Deuteronomy chapter 33. That is the blessing of Moses over the Israelites right before his death. Now, let's talk about our application. A lot of the book of Deuteronomy has been talking about how the Israelites weren't going to be faithful to God after Moses died, right? So the question that I had after reading this is, why did Moses bless the people even though he knew they weren't going to be as faithful as they were supposed to be? Israel could receive a blessing, I think, not based on their personal righteousness, but because Moses knew that God would work through the nation, through those people, to accomplish his will, right? No matter how they acted, God was going to work it out for his purposes. And I was thinking about an application of this, and, and I think we should bless the church for similar reasons. We should be quick to bless the church, the institution of the church, for similar reasons. A lot of times we can get down on the church because people aren't perfect, there's problems in our, in our local churches. So we can acknowledge that the people within the church are not always perfect, and they don't always represent Jesus as well as they should. But we can be certain of one thing, and this is the reason that we can bless the church, that is that God is at work even through the imperfections of the people that he has called to follow him. And that God on earth through the church is going to accomplish exactly what he always intended to accomplish.